The sampler track in Cubase 11 has a number of great new features to discover. The new slicing mode chops up your loops so that they're ready to play with just a click. There are now two global LFOs available to add motion and interest to your sounds. You can go for a vintage feel or the highest fidelity with the sample engine's new quality modes. Then there's a new mono legato glide, perfect for riding 808 bass lines. And much more. Let's check it out. With Cubase 11, the sampler track becomes a one-stop music production powerhouse. Let me show you. First, let's talk about the slicing options that we have now in the sampler track. Let me play this drum loop for you. Okay, let's drop this into the sampler track now. This is the normal behavior. I can play the loop in different pitches, but now we also have a slice mode in the sampler track, okay? So let's slice this loop. And now I have this loop spread across the keyboard. So now I can play every slice on my keyboard. And I can rearrange my loop. So immediately I take control of my loops. I can take every element and place it somewhere else. And I can also generate a MIDI phrase out of this loop. I can click here, drag, and drop this MIDI phrase into my project. Now we have different modes when it comes to slicing. We have the transient mode, which of course takes into account the transients. We have a few controls there. We have threshold control. We have the minimum length control, which means that if we don't want to end up with really tiny slices that just have transients, I can change the length. So I only get like bigger chunks. We also have a fade in and a fade out. So if I want, to get rid of these clicks at the end of my slices, I can just use my fade out control and they become smooth. And the same goes for fade in. Now we have even more options for slicing. We also have the grid mode, which takes into account the grid and I can change the grid resolution from here. For example, I might want to slice for 16th notes or I might want to slice for 32nd notes and so on and so forth. Then we have the transient and grid slice mode, which is a combination of transients and grid. So I can change the grid, but the transients will also be taken into account, which is great for drums, for vocals, for synths. And then we also have the manual mode, which allows us to add our own custom slices. So if I hit the Alt key, I can create my slices like that. And of course, I can zoom in and tweak them accordingly. This will be extremely useful for material that don't have transient information or they don't conform to bars and beats so that you can still slice them and create interesting results. It goes without saying that if you want to create super cool vocal chops, the new slice mode will really allow you to do that in seconds. Cool, right? The next thing that I want to show you, which gives you a lot of sonic possibilities with the sampler track now, is the new quality modes. So we have the standard quality. We have three more modes. We have high quality. And then we have best and extreme. Now, these modes give you a better quality, especially when it comes to high frequency information, so you get less artifacts when you have lots of high frequencies. So let me give you an example. If I play this drum loop really high on the keyboard, see how this sounds. And now let's see how it sounds with the extreme quality. See, it's very well defined. All the transients are super clear. And then we have the vintage mode, which is really interesting because this mode emulates the bit reduction, rate reduction, and the sound of the old classic drum machines. So let's try that and let's see how this transforms our loop. Vintage. We have also turntable modes. Let's try the 78. So again, standard and vintage. 
So this gives you a lot of grit and a lot of character to any material that you throw at it. Now let me show you something really cool, the new Mono Legato Glide Mode. I'm gonna show you how easy it is now to create long 808 bass lines using just one 808 sample. So let me take this 808 kick drum right here. And now let's turn this into a sampler track. Let's drag it in, there we go. Now I can play this immediately on my keyboard. Which is great. I mean, if we're going to do an 808 bass line, I want to go to my amp envelope and just turn the velocity all the way down because I want everything to be super loud. Now, what I can do is I can go to monophonic mode. So I can play one note at a time. But then we have the new legato mode and check what that does. So now I can play this sample without re-triggering the attack every single time. But it gets better than this. We can now activate Glide. And we can also have a finger glide, which means that if I play the note separately, we won't trigger a glide, but if I play legato, I trigger the glide. Now, why don't we go and create this bass line? I'm going to add a filter, add a little bit of drive. Yes, nice, that's great. See, everything is inside the sampler track. And now, let's make sure that this sustains forever. So I'm going to turn on loop mode, go continuous, and I'm going to set my loop points, okay? I'm going to go like this. Maybe I want to turn on snap to zero crossing so that we don't get any clicks, and now my and loop point. And as you can see, it's very easy to find the correct loop point here in the sampler track. Let's try that. Maybe I can add a little bit of crossfade. Brilliant, this will work great for what I want. So now let's see what we just created from this single 808 sample. Let's turn up the glide. Excellent. That brings a smile to my face. Now let me show you the new LFOs with a sampler track. Let me take this synth note. All right, now let's say I want to add a filter to this. I activate my filter. Maybe add some resonance, a little bit of drive. And now I can activate an LFO for my filter. And if I want to change this LFO, I can click on the modulation section here and now I can see everything. I can sync my LFO. I can change the shape. I can have it re-trigger every first node on for every node. And I can also assign this LFO to my mode wheel. Now we have two LFOs actually. So this is LFO number one and this is LFO number two. And these are completely separate. So maybe I want to have LFO number one control my filter at a very low speed. Maybe let's say per bar, something like this. As you can see, we also have quite a few different modes for our LFOs. So let's try the log for this one. And now let's go to my pitch module and activate LFO number two. Let's activate module for this one as well. So now we've activated LFO two for the pitch and we've also activated LFO one for my filters. So now let's see what we have. Wow. 
So as you can see, with the new features in the sampler track, you can breathe new life into any sample.